Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Federico Porcedu. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm a senior developer in Havana, Italy. Actually, I'm based in, uh, in Cagliari in Sardinia at the Havana Advanced Technology Center. And here you can find my contacts. Let's go. Today, I show you an SPFX web port that allows you to build a guided tour inside our SharePoint model page using an open source uh, solution uh, named uh, React to JS. Uh, let's see together general needs. Uh, usually, SharePoint sites are user friendly, uh, especially modern ones. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, especially uh, in the context of, of uh, adoption of uh, a new site, uh, like a new modern internet, is, uh, it is good to offer uh, to users the um, possibility uh, of having a page guide, uh, like a tour or a tutorial. And to improve site adoption, uh, you could create a video guide or a well-explained documentation. However, some users uh, don't, uh, do not have the time to read documentation or uh, watch the video. Uh, they will just like to use the new site. So for uh, this type of end users, uh, most of them, uh, you can create a dynamic tour. Uh, so a user while, uh, can use uh, the new site while learning uh, and uh, all feature of the new site. Let's see uh, what expected results should be. Uh, so when you start the tour, a model uh, will be displayed uh, with a description of the highlighted area, and you can go uh, to the next step or back, uh, navigating inside the page. So the user will see the description and will have the opportunity to preview the advice what the, the, the publisher uh, thought for him. Um, building this, uh, this sample, I made some implementation and design choice that I want to share with you. Uh, this web part uh, mainly illustrate the following concept on top of SharePoint framework. So how to use and how to extend with custom render the property field collection data from PMP and SPFX uh, property controls and how to retrieve all SPFX uh, web part in the current page using PMPGS and how to include external uh, React component like React to JS. Uh, in this solution, my choice is to persist the configuration of the page tour in the web property itself without using a centralized uh, SharePoint custom list. Uh, I saw this for educational purpose, obviously, uh, because I wanted to depend the property field collection data, uh, property control. Uh, what about the property pane? Uh, yeah, uh, the property pane uh, allows you to uh, choose the web part from a list of all web parts on the current page. Uh, specify a descriptive text uh, like a step description. Uh, the sorting and the order according to which uh, it will be shown in the tutorial and enable or not a step uh, with the tour. Uh, there are pros and cons having made this choice. So as a pro, uh, you can use this web bar multiple times into the same site. For, so for if you have uh, a lot of pages, uh, you wanted to implement a tour. Uh, and as a cons, uh, if you delete the web part instant, you lose the tour configuration. A really important side of the solution is the DOM dependency. Uh, these are critical points. Uh, so I'd like to talk to critical points and future improvement. Uh, solution, the, the solution using uh, React to GS, uh, this open source solution, as a dependency on the DOM of the page. Uh, so what it did is uh, try to minimize it uh, using the data tag, uh, data SP feature instance D, and take advantage uh, of the fact uh, that every web part has uh, one. Uh, but obviously, this could case a solution break to, um, tomorrow if tomorrow the DOM uh, will be modified. And the other critical point is that the tour uh, insists on the body of the page, so you can define a tour for web parts and not for the Chrome layout like header and footer, uh, which leave off to the page. Obviously, this aspect limits the solution, but as uh, usual, uh, mine is a sample, so please, I'm waiting for your suggestion to improve and discuss the solution. Let's go demo time. We can see this web part in action. 
let me check. Um, here we are. So uh, let's look at it works. Uh, apply the, to this really cool site. Uh, this is the landing taken from the SharePoint uh, lookbook sample. And uh, what you can do is uh, start with the configuration of the tour. This is the web part, it's a simple button. And the configuration, uh, okay. Let's start the page. And we can show the property pane. And there are three properties. Uh, button, la button label, so we can change the name of the button and the um, subtitle obviously, and the most important part is the configuration step option to show our property pane field collection data. This is the property pane from usable component. And in the first column, there is the webper list. So you can select the web part from the current page. So here you can find uh, our web part, obviously is a, it is dynamical. Uh, so if you add or remove a web part, it change uh, uh, second column is the description. And here you can um, what you, you read serial advice for uh, your end users. Uh, the third column is the um, position, the order. So the tour start in uh, this order. And, so it, and you can enable or disable uh, the step. So you can you remove a stop uh, step without uh, deleting of configuration. Uh, let's see the web part in action. So um, for instance, we start with uh, the first action and uh, I think it's a really cool this uh, result because uh, I like it very much. This uh, plugin is, is um, React.js uh, is uh, well integrated in the uh, page. So you can go, uh, you can see the, um, the model and the overlay and description you choose in your panel, obviously, and go to the next step, clicking the, this uh, arrow, or just using the keyword uh, next and back. And I think user uh, can improve uh, to um, uh, the current uh, page, and can, um, not improve, they can learn and uh, guided the current page so uh, they can understand where is my tools, where is my documents, and uh, uh, I think this approach is uh, quickly and uh, with a lot of effectiveness. So uh, if you want so to add a, oh, where is it, Network connection, if you want to add another step, it's uh, easy because you can um, modify these properties and just use the same property pane. And that here, so you can choose another web port like recent documents, for instance, and this is the recent documents <laughs> steps. The test and the position, so you can use like this and for instance, deactivate all previous steps, add a save, and let's start again the tour. And this is from a uh, mechanic configuration. Let's get ants in the code. So you, we can see presentation. And I would like to dip just the Get web ports method. This is in uh, the tour web ports. So with this method, I can retrieve the current page using PMPJS, obviously, and just navigate with uh, some for each in a section, columns, and retrieve all controls and put my uh, state from uh, React. So I use state and I use this event for the property pane configuration start. This event file when you open the right property pane. And so I call my get through app parts and set the load indicator false. Load indicator indicator is really cool because in uh, uh, is an out of the box offered from the property pane. And you can specify uh, a loader and uh, loading in the indicator the right time and if you want to show the load indicator or not. So this is the load indicator. Let me check. So when you uh, start edit, okay. When you start edit, maybe 
without a refresh. Okay, because it's fired only the first time. And here we are. This is the loader. And I think it's uh, cool. I use this uh, loader. Then we can see uh, my custom render implementation for this step because of I need more space to write description. So uh, the property pane collection data use uh, only uh, textbooks and I would like to use text area and I did the custom render. So this is the way and just implement the on update event on uh, and on change events sorry and uh, on update uh, for uh, um, make persist the information to the property pane uh, data uh, data um, control the second class is the tour tsx okay and I would like to show to you the component it update uh, in these uh, React events. I just call and retrieve the tour that are um, inside the property of the web part. So uh, using this, uh, this method, I can get settings and uh, the React Tour GS component use uh, two property: the selector and this is the DOM dependency. So I design in, in, uh, I wrote in, in this way uh, the DOM dependency because I need to retrieve the web part ID, uh, the web part is a CD, and this is the content, so this is the description. Back to the web part, this is how to use the component tool, and so in the Complete the update, I get or, uh, the, the configuration and bind to the steps uh, with a state um, variable. And uh, I think that the code deep is a finish and it is all from my side. So thank you a lot uh, for your attention. Really great, actually, stuff, Federico. Um, uh, and like like mentioned already by Frederica, the really the key challenge of this one is that it, it actually acts as the DOM would be an API, so the base DOM. And so whenever there will be changes potentially on the DOM structure, it might actually break the functionality. So people should be aware of that. Mm -hmm.